Well, for more on women heading to the polls, writer and political commentator Anushay Hossein joins us now from Washington, D.C. Anushay, thank you so much for coming on the show. First off, uh, we're reading that more women are likely to vote uh, Democrats. Could women, therefore, swing the outcome or, or have a major impact on the outcome of these midterms? Uh, yes, you know, it's funny because everyone is terming um, these midterms the year of the women, but in many ways, almost every single U.S. election has been the year of the women because women traditionally vote uh, more than men. There's a massive gender gap in the way that America votes. And since Trump has come into power, 36,000 American women have actually expressed uh, interest in running for political office. And a lot of people don't know this, but America is actually ranked around the world quite low. They're currently 104th for the number of women that they have in, in government. So it's already a historic year, and women are about to make history again um, in the upcoming midterm elections, which is, you know, less than two weeks away. And Democratic women, we've been talking a lot about, you know, women who support the Democrats, that they're energized to vote after the Kavanaugh saga, I don't know what you want to call it, protests. But I would imagine that so too are Republican women. When you fire up one side, you're going to see the other, other side respond. What's your take? Well, the funny thing is um, we need all women to really come together. But as far as the numbers go, the majority of women who are running for office are overwhelmingly Democratic, uh, first-time candidates, and also women of color. And the exciting thing is, is they're not just running for the first time, but they're winning. You know, we saw uh, Ayanna Presley in Massachusetts. We have Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez in New York. You know, she ran against incumbent Jim Crowley, who has been in the New York seat for, you know, well over two decades. And then we've got Stacey Abrams as well. So it's historic. Uh, uh, numbers of women that are running for U.S. House, Senate, and uh, governor races. But the Democratic nominees, about 50 percent of their nominees are, are women. And for Republicans, it's about 12 percent. So, you know, Republican women, they need to vote, too, but they really need to vote uh, the president and all the other men who agree with Donald Trump out, because it's really becoming um, women have a lot to lose. And I think that they're seeing that no matter how Trump is able to kind of control the news cycle and distract uh, people, he's already nominated two Supreme Court justices Let me who just... are on the court. So women have a lot to lose. And there's like a lot of policy issues that we're concerned about. Let me just, um, I just want to play devil's advocate for the final question here. Uh, you say women have a lot to lose. What do you mean? Well, there's issues. You know, a lot of people think that um, it's just about abortion, but it's also more than that. I mean, the Supreme Court really shapes American culture. And because these are lifetime appointees, uh, you're going to see these men on the Supreme Court for a next generation or two. And I think what really, really energized uh, women, it's not just Trump, but I think it's seeing a, a self proclaimed proclaimed and admitted sexual assaulter nominate another alleged a man a, accused of uh, validly accused of, of sexual assault uh, be nominated to the court. So you can already see that there's a very clear anti-women pattern that's emerging in U.S. politics that I think American women are just not going to stand for. Well, hopefully women uh, of all uh, you know, no matter which side of the aisle they're on, hopefully all women head to the polls. Thank you for that. That is Sanu Sheikh Hussain, live from Washington, D.C. Thank you.